Mm. If you're showing something, all we see is just all I see is people. Okay. Uh, let me uh share it again. Can you see it now? There you can you see go. it now. There you okay. Go. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Whatever. Bye. So, um, we are um, we're going to talk about a few things today. We're going to continue looking at Mystery Babylon, but I got to share share a few things that the Most High put on my heart. So, about I think it was about three weeks back. Uh, here in uh, Texas, we had a storm, and the storm was uh, is actually a tornado in some of the cities that were around us, but not not here where I'm at. But the wind was so strong, like all the I got some tables outside and some things that are kind of heavy, but all those things were just falling over. Um, and so I woke up, and I'm asking I'm asking the most high i'm like you know please protect us while we're here um because i know there's some tornadoes around us so just asking him to protect us and then i went back to sleep i'm like i'm not worried i know he's got us protected i'm not even gonna think about it but a few hours later i got woken up again because it was just so loud and so i get up and i pray again i say father hey please just watch over us and and i'm I, i've got my eyes closed i'm just you know how we pray sometimes just just talking to them and before i could really get back into a heavy sleep the words a destroying wind is coming came to my mind and it was so strong i said you know what i got to tell the people at bible study this i got to let some of my friends know i gotta let some of the mishpachad know what he what i heard so strongly this was about three weeks ago and so i said a destroying wind and I, so when it came time for me to about a couple of days later to study babylon again so i was preparing for bible study the first scripture that i the first scripture that I went to was Jeremiah 51 verse 1. It says, Thus saith Yahuwah, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me a destroying wind. So that's all I needed. I said, Okay, yep. I hear you. I guess this is what I need to share. <laughs> uh, he does that to me from time to time, just confirms his word. So what I want to do is we're going to look at this briefly. We're going to look at this destroying wind or however long, you know, yeah, wills will look at this destroying wind. And then we'll uh, go to some other scriptures as well. So I want to actually start in Genesis 15, 13. So this is the the uh, word that Yah gave to Abraham, and he says in Genesis 15, verse 13, he says, And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them there for 400 years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will i judge and afterward they shall come out with great substance so i know most of us on the call have know about this verse we've talked about it many times but right now we're going to look at this will i judge part and then if we have time we're going to look at this afterward shall they come out with great substance so back to Jeremiah 51, verse 1. Let's read it one more time. It says, Thus saith Yahuwah, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me, a destroying wind. So the Most High is letting us know 
that uh, a destroying wind is coming against Babylon and against all of those that come against him. Those that dwell in the midst, those that dwell in the midst of the nations, of the people that come against the Most High, he's bringing a destroying wind. Verse 2 says, and will send unto Babylon fanners that shall fan her and shall empty her land. For in the day of trouble, they shall be against her round about. So this word here for fanners, Babylon, I'll send unto Babylon fanners. Uh, let's, let's look at it uh, quickly in the Hebrew. This word is zor, and what it means is stranger, to be a stranger. Uh, it also can mean to, to turn aside or to depart, so to become estranged. So let's, so let's read this again. So, and will send unto Babylon strangers or foreigners that shall fan her. This word fan right here, it means to scatter. Uh, I'll show you that as well. So if we look at the word for fan, um, it's zara, and um, scatter, fan, or winnow. So just to give you a few examples of this, you see Leviticus 26, 33, and I will scatter among you the heathen and will draw out a sword after you and your land shall be desolate and your cities waste. So this word, this English word that they use for fan, which is the Hebrew word zur, this is how this word is used. It could be fan like winnow, or it can be as in scattering. Uh, not another example here in Jeremiah 31, 10, hear the word of Yahuwah, O ye nations, and declare in the isles afar off and say, he that scattered Israel will gather him and keep him as a shepherd doth his flock. So this, this fanning that's happening uh, to Babylon is basically a scattering that is happening. So let's read this one more time. And, and will send unto Babylon strangers that shall scatter her or winnow her and shall empty her land. For in the day of trouble, they shall be against her round about. So at the time of Babylon's judgment, foreigners are going to come and they're going to surround Babylon. And so that's what this destroying wind is all about. This destroying wind that's coming, it has something to do with those that are going to be um, scattering Babylon. Those are, that are going to be uh, coming and around about her, such as like a siege. So let's let's read the rest. Let's read a little bit more of this. Against him that bendeth, let the archer bend his bow, and against him that lifteth up in his brig brigandine, and spare ye not her young men, destroy ye utterly all her hosts. So this is this means like armor. So Yah is is letting the people know that bend the bow. Those that that have their armor, he's saying, spare not Babylon, spare not her young men, destroy, just destroy everybody, destroy her army, her host. So thus the slain shall fall in the land of the Chaldeans and they that are thrust through in her streets. Now, I'm going to stop here because the reason I... I, I I believe this is important is because there are many that don't know, they don't understand uh, that 
Babylon is going to be destroyed in this way. They don't know that uh, there's war coming. This is this is another way of saying war is coming. And so what we want to be is we want to be in the arms of Yahuwah. Because if we're not in his arms of Yahuwah, all of these things that we're about to read about in terms of happening to Babylon, we might get caught in the middle of it. Verse 5, it says, For Israel has not been forsaken, nor Judah of his Elohim, of uh, Yahuwah Sava'ot, through their land, though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. So then he, he lets us know, flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity. For this is the time of Yah's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. Ba Babylon hath been the golden cup. Remember last week we read about the golden cup and all the abominations that were that were in the, the golden cup, along with all the filthiness. So Babylon had been a golden cup in, in Yah's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her? Take balm for her pain. If so, she may be healed. If so be, she may be healed. Yah says, we would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go everyone into his own country for her judgment reacheth unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. So Babylon is gonna be fallen, is gonna be destroyed. Yah would have, would have loved to have healed her, but that's not going to happen. He says, forsake her, everyone go into his own country. So that means all the people here that speak that that are from Chinese, that are of Chinese descent, everyone that's here that's from uh Indian descent, any anyone that's here that may be from from Ghana or someone that might be here from Nigeria or someone that might be from, from England, go back to your own country because the judgment has reached unto heaven. So those that do not flee Babylon, those that do not flee Babylon are going to experience this judgment, this wrath of Yah that he's going to put on the nations. Um, uh, go ahead, someone raise their hand. Go ahead, Yermiyahu. So if everyone's going to go back to their nations, right? Where is Yashorel going to go? <laughs> I think you know the answer to that question. <laughs> yeah, I just throw it out. I just throw it out. There. All right, all right. That that's yeah, that's that's a good point. So just like the rest of the nations are to go to their own nation, where where is Israel going to go? Where is Yashorel going to go? Yashorel's going to go back to their Yashorel's nation as well. We're going to go to the land. It's going to be a journey. We're going to read a little bit about that journey. It's going to be. Um, an, ex an experience, a wilderness experience before we get there. Not everybody's going to make it, but it's important that we know what's happening. Like these are some of the signs that we can look for as we're trying to figure out who is Babylon and what are the conditions going to be before Babylon is destroyed. We may, it, you may or may not know if you're living in babylon that the destruction is is imminent you you may not know it may just come as a sudden surprise and, and next thing you know there's people all around you but anybody who has ears to hear and eyes to see is going to know that the destruction of babylon is coming quickly it's coming very soon so so that's really all I wanted to share. I wasn't I wasn't trying to go into this whole chapter and read it, but I heard I heard there's a destroying wind is coming. And so what I've been asking people, people that are close to me, I've been asking them, uh, some of them anyway, this question, you know, what would you do 
if you knew that the second exodus was going to happen within the next few months, what would you do? How would you live? What would you, how would your speech change? Is there anybody that you would have some words you need to say to talk to, to, to support some unforgiveness maybe that might be in your, your heart? Is there any anything that, um, you know, that is, is pressing, anything that you would change? And so as I was thinking about that for myself and I asked a few, few different people that question, um, I, there were some things that I said, you know what, I would be doing some things a little bit differently if I knew that Yah was coming really, if, if, if our exodus was coming really soon, I, I would, I, I think I would be more in a state of repentance. I would be, I would be more uh, on my knees in prayer. I would be speaking to the most high, probably more than I do right now. I would be making sure that any any thoughts that I had that are negative against someone, I'd be dealing with that right now. I'd be dealing with that. I, I don't want no type of unforgiveness. I don't want any bitterness in me. I don't want any anything that's not pleasing to the most high. I, anything like that, I want it gone. Because I don't want to receive these plagues that are going to come onto Babylon and for those that dwell in the midst of her that choose not to flee, those that choose to remain in their iniquity, even though they know what's right. Uh, go ahead. Oh, Joel 2.15, let's look at that. Thank you, our key. It says, blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn, solemn assembly. And this is exactly what the Most High is telling us to do to prepare. Set, set apart a fast. Solemn, uh, uh, call a solemn assembly. Blow that trumpet. Let people know it's time to raise an alarm. It's time to shout. Let people know time is getting short. So it's time for us to gather together. It's time for us to become one. Verse 16, it says, gather the people, sanctify the con congregation. I mean, set, set them apart. Assemble the elders, gather the children, those that suck the breasts. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. So Look, look, let's look at this, this, these groups of people right here. So gather the people, sanctify the congregation, those that are elders, those that are old, gather the children, those that are young, those that suck the breast. So even the babies, even the ones that are still nursing, gather them together too. Let the bridegroom come forth out of his chamber and the bride out of the closet. So this this is this should this is our attitude. This is the attitude we want want to have, and this is what we should be doing. The closer and closer and the closer we see that day coming, um, we want to. I verse fourteen as well. Um, I want to I want to read this. Uh, actually, I'll start in verse thirteen. It says, "And rend your heart." not your garments. Turn unto Yahuwah your Elohim, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repent of him of the evil. So this is the time for us to be rending our hearts. This is the time for us not to be just doing things with the outwardly appearance. That's why it says, don't rend your garments. I don't care about what what it looks like on the outside i want your heart turn to yahuwah so if you're not following the most high if you're not keeping his commandments and his instructions if you're not uh if, if you're not walking in forgiveness and in mercy towards your brother it's time to do that and the reason we can do that is because he is gracious 
and merciful. This means he's, he's kind. He's slow to anger and of great kindness. Some of us have done some things that uh, we're not pleased with. Some of us have asked a question. I know in times of my life, I, I, I thought, will he even forgive me for what I just did? Will he even let that go? Because I know I did wrong and I know what's right and I still messed up. I still did what's wrong. But thank the most high. He's he is merciful and he's slow to anger and he's he's of great kindness. He says, who knows if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto you who are your Elohim. Who knows? So that's what I want to share today in regards to this. I wanted to let you all know that there is a destroying wind that's coming and we need to be ready for that destroying wind. Since we know a, wind, a destroying wind is coming, then that means we need to get on the right type of garments, the right type of clothing. You don't just go outside when there's a storm and just allow yourself to get soaked and blown away. You prepare, you dress properly. Okay. So now, uh, now that I got that out of the way, I pray that the Most High is pleased. Um, I, I want to look at Isaiah 60, verse 1. So as I said earlier, we know that judgment is coming, Genesis chapter 15. And then after judgment, then we're going to leave with great substance. So Isaiah 61, I was reading this and I thought this would be a good, good segue because right after Babylon is destroyed, Isaiah 60 is talking about the second exodus. This chapter is talking about the second exodus, some of the things that's going to happen in the future. So looking at verse one, it says, arise, shine, for thy light is come. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the kabod of Yahuwah is risen upon thee. So that means the, the esteem, the honor, the splendor of Yahuwah is risen upon thee. Now, what I'm going to do, because I, I was doing this earlier this week, I was reading this verse. I said, you know what? I'm going to change all these thighs to you, because thy just means you. And when I, when I changed it, it just hit a little bit differently. So I'm going to read this one more time. Arise. Now, who would need to arise first off? Those that are asleep are usually the ones that are rising. So let's just keep that in mind. Arise, shine, for your light is come. And the kabod of Yahuwah is risen upon you. So Isaiah is saying, at this time, at this time, we're going to look at this, this chapter. So you can see, I want you to see that this is uh, talking about a time in the future. This isn't something that has already happened. This is what's going to happen to Israel. So at this time, we are told to rise, get up, get up from our sleep, shine, because our light, the light is come. And now Yaz, the most high, his kabod, his honor, his splendor. That is on us. That's on us. He says, it's risen upon you. So when I think about the kabod of Yahuwah being risen upon us, that's a that's a honor. That's a that's a privilege. I think about people like Moses. When Moses went into the tabernacle and his when he came out of that tabernacle, his face shone. It was so bright. It was this light. It was that was that was shining was so bright that even the people around were fearful to the point where he had to start veiling his face. That's what I think about this when I think about the kabod of Yahuwah risen upon us. When I think about the kabod or of Yahuwah risen upon us, I also think about Yah's nature and his characteristics, 
being on us. So arise, shine, for thy light is come, and his kabod is upon you. Now, Daniel 12, 3, it says, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Now, I want to be one of these people in verse one that's shining when I leave. I want to shine. I want to have some light. I want his kabod to be all over me as much as I can have. So Daniel 12, 3 is a, is a nice little, little key for you to see who are going to be these people that are going to be shining. Who are these people that are going to have this light? It says those that be wise. They're going to shine as the brightness of the firmament. So I guess that's important. It's important for us to figure out who are the wise people, how you become wise. And also they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Now, there's some people I know on this call that I, I know qualify for this because they are turning many to righteousness. So those of us that choose to tell others about the most high, those of us that choose to follow his commandments and be an example, those of us that choose to stand out and be lights because people can see our good works and then they can glorify our father in heaven. Those that do that, they're going to be shining. They're going to be uh, shining forever and ever eternally. Ecclesiastes 8.1, it says, who is as the wise man and who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine and the boldness of his face shall be changed. So here we see two, two different examples about wisdom causing us to shine. So Isaiah is letting us know, get up. It's time to get up. Arise, shine. Your light has come. Uh, one second. So we want to understand what is wisdom because we, we saw the wise. We see the connection between the wise and the light and the shining. Deuteronomy 4, 5, and 6, it says, Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as Yahuwah, my Elohim, commanded me that you should do so in the land, whether you go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding and the sight of the nations. So what is our wisdom? Our wisdom is that we keep his statutes and his judgments, all that Yahuwah commanded us, and that we do them. That is our wisdom and our understanding in the sight of the nations. That means that they'll see it. When you keep his commandments, the nations are gonna look to you and they're gonna say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Go ahead, uh, whoever, someone raise their hand. I can't see the screen. Um, Oh, okay. I guess not. Okay. So sorry for that interruption. But the nations, they're going to see that. See, this is the light. When we keep his commandments, this is light. This is light to the nations. We're going to be shining. So Matthew 5 14. It said, no, now I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. I don't hear you now if you're talking. Okay, just let me know if you uh, have something to say. Can you hear Is me? It... Now I can? Go ahead. Uh, the phone just cut off. I didn't even know. Okay. Um, I, I was thinking of the wise and foolish versions, Matthew 25, and how the wise had oil and they had their lamps. 
I mean, their lights burning and it called them wise. And so they were wise because they not only to me had the scripture, the truth, but they were also, they had enough to um, get them to not be, they had enough, uh, you know what I'm saying? I can't pull it all together. Okay, I'm not thinking all of it yet, but you hear me though. Mm -hmm. That's right, that we're gonna be looking at that. That's in one of these slides coming up. The, uh, that's a good example. So Matthew 5, 14, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. So, so even just as Yahushua was the light of the world, we also are the light of the world. But in order for us to be that light, we got to have wisdom. And that wisdom, our wisdom, is when we keep his commandments, his statutes, and his judgments. So. I also um, wanted to look at this verse as well because speaking of, of light, Revelation 4, 5, it says, and out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of Elohim. So in Revelation 4, 5, you we see these uh, seven lamps. That it's the it's it's a menorah, seven branch menorah that is before the throne of the Most High. So of course the seven lamps produce light. They're light. And and uh, what John is telling us here is that these lamps that are burning brightly are the seven spirits of Elohim. And in, and in Isaiah 11, 2 is where we find what these seven spirits, uh, what, who are these seven spirits? It says, and the spirit of Yahuwah shall rest on him, upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of Yahuwah. So these are the seven spirits that are burning before the throne in that menorah and produce light. So we want the word of the most high. We wanna keep his commandments. We wanna keep his commandments and the spirit of Yah on the inside of us, uh, uh, is gonna what cause us to have the light that the world is looking for, to be the light of the world. So now to Yermiahu's point, ten virgins, Matthew 25, verse 1, it says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamp and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise, five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise, they took oil in their vessels with their lamp. Now, remember, this is our, our wisdom. When we do his statutes and his judgments and we keep his commandments, we, know, we also know that there is one of the seven spirits of Yah is the spirit of wisdom. So the spirit and word and the word, they are one. They work together. Yahushua said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. They work together. Ver Ecclesiastes 10.1, it says, dead flies make a perfumer's oil ferment and stink. So a little, little folly outweighs wisdom and honor. So this word folly right here, it means foolish. So we, we can see these connections between the, the oil and the wisdom and foolishness in the word proverbs 21 20 it says there is treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise but a foolish man spendeth it up so so these 10 virgins as they're as they're getting ready to leave to meet the bridegroom 
they they need oil in order to keep the light going. They need the oil. And we, I'm not going to go through the whole story of the ten virgins. You can read that if 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 you uh, on your own time. But those ten virgins, if those that don't have enough oil, they're called foolish. Those that have enough oil, they took the oil with them in their vessels. Those are the ones that are wise. And so now when we go when we go back to Isaiah 61 and we see arise, shine, for thy light is come and the kabod of Yahuwah is risen upon thee. These are the ones that are wise. These are the ones that are keeping Yah's commandments. These are the ones that have the, the spirit of wisdom residing on the inside of them. These are the ones that are going to be shining. Okay, so Exodus 10, 23. Um, remember the first Exodus, um, the children of Israel were, were living in the land of Goshen. So verse 23, it says, they saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days, but all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. So just just uh thinking about goshen and how there was darkness all over the land the children of israel though they had light in their dwellings so this reminds me of isaiah 61 in the second exodus you know there's going to be a, a, an elect there's going to be a remnant israel is going to have light there those that are uh those that are keeping yah's commandments those that have the spirit on the inside, those that are wise, they're not going to run out of oil. They're going to have light, and so we see it. We see um, we see something similar to this in, in Exodus, because darkness was over all of Egypt, but not where Israel was at. Verse twenty. 21, it says, and Yahuwah went before them by day in the pillar of a cloud to lead them that way. And by night, by a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. So just as uh, Yah led the children of Israel in the wilderness, he leads them by, by, uh, by a cloud and by fire. Um, Yah's going to be leading us. He's going to be leading us in this, in this uh, second exodus that's going to occur once once the judgment happens to the land of our to the to the places we're at in Babylon in the land of our captivity. Verse Exodus 27, verse 20, it says, And thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring thee pure olive, oil olive beaten for the light to cause the lamp to burn always. So um this oil, this oil that is uh, necessary to keep this light burning always this lamp this manure that was in the uh manure that was in the temple this is a this is a, a picture of um the eternal light of yahushua remember yahushua is the light of the world and so the priests they had to keep this keep this oil coming keep the light going that light is never supposed to burn out and just like the ten virgins, the the five wise virgins, we should also always keep that oil full. We should always have enough oil full. We should always be ready. We should always be keeping Yah's commandments and His instructions and following Him. So, now who's not going to have this light? This is important. Yea, the light of the wicked shall be put out. And the spark of his flame fire shall not shine. So Job 18, 5. If you're wicked, if you're walking in darkness and not light, if you're not keeping Yah's instructions and you say, you know, I'm I want to take this, I'm just gonna do what I want to do. I'm gonna live my life how I want to live my life. That's wickedness. And so whatever light you do have. That's going to be put out. The spark of his fire is not going to shine. 
So, so uh, Matthew 25, 5, it's, it says, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. So remember in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1, we read, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the kabod of Yahuwah is risen upon you. So people that are asleep are the ones that normally are told to arise. And so in Matthew 25, you see that all of these, actually all of them were asleep. Even the wise, even the wise were asleep. They slumbered and slept. So, um, verse six to eight, it says, "And at midnight there was a cry made: Behold, the bridegroom cometh; go ye out to meet him." Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, "Give us unto your oil, for our lamps are gone out." So those whose lamps have gone out didn't have enough oil those whose lamps are put out job 18 5 the light of the wicked shall be put out the spark of his fire shall not shine so it's not good just to start the race we got to finish it those who endure, remember, those who endure to the end are saved. So we want our the, our lamps, we want them to remain full. We want them to re remain full so that we're not like these foolish virgins who, who wants this time for us to go. We got to say, hey, hey, I see you got a lot of light. Can you give us some of yours? Ours is gone out. We don't want to be one of those. Okay, Romans eleven seven. I was reading this. I thought this was pretty interesting. I thought I might throw this in here. It says uh, in verse seven, "What then? Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded." According as it is written, Elohim have given them the the spirit of slumber eyes that they should not see and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And now we say, if let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. So let's, let's look at this. Let's start. Let's look at this first verse we read. So Israel, they haven't attained which, what they sought for. Remember, they, they rejected the Messiah. Israel, we, our forefathers, we, we did not keep his commandments. We did not always keep the Sabbaths. And, and, and Israel was blinded because they did not know the time of his, his visitation, Luke 19. So those that, that chose not to believe, all of those, they were blinded. And, and in verse, verse 9, it said, let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. So the table that they set, that's what's going to cause them to fall. That's what's going to be made a stumbling block. And that's what's going to be a trap to them. It says, let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back all way. So the reason that Israel finds itself in the state that is in is because Yah is the one that gave them the spirit of slumber to sleep. So those those virgins being sleep is not surprising. Them not them being sleep having a spirit of slumber. Um, but thank, thanks be to the Most High that we are waking up. We're starting to wake up as we are coming into the understanding and knowledge of who the Most High is and what his instructions are and who we are as a people. He's waking us up.
he's waking us up. So um, just like we read uh, in this, in this, uh, I'm sorry, right here, just like we read uh, in this verse earlier, verse six, at midnight, there was a cry made. At midnight, it's when it's dark. That's when it's, remember, darkness is, is absence of light, but it's also wickedness. It's also sin. It's, it's, it represents iniquity. It's, it's a time where things are um, full of perversion and sin and th things. So at midnight, when it was dark, there was a cry made. Behold, behold the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. So, so these these virgins are getting getting ready to get up to go out to meet him. So, verse ten: Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see. Bow down their back alway. Verse eleven: I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Elohim forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. So even though, even though Israel was blinded, even though Israel um, has been scattered and is cap held captive right now in captivity, this was done. So now the Gentiles actually through through the fall of Israel, through their stumbling, now the Gentiles have a way to have salvation. But how they're going to do it, the Gentiles are going to have that salvation by looking at us, by us being an example, by, by us being a, a role model, by us teaching the Torah and showing how to do it. Okay, verse 2 of Isaiah 60. Remember, this is talking about the second exodus. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. Remember, darkness is a time of sin and iniquity and perversion. But Yahuwah shall arise upon you and his kabod shall be seen upon you. So during the time of Babylon's destruction, and now we're getting ready to leave. It's darkness all over the earth, just like we saw in Exodus. Darkness was all over the Egypt, all over Egypt. He set a difference between his people and the Egyptians. He's also going to set a difference between his people and the rest of the world. Because Yahuwah is going to rise upon us. He's going to and his kabod is going to be risen upon thee. So we see this Exodus 10, verse 21. It says, And Yahuwah said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt for three days. They saw not one another. Neither arose any from his place for three days, but all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. So as the earth is going through this period of darkness, Israel is going to have light in their dwellings. So arise, shine, for your light is come. We see the same thing happening uh in the future that happened in the previous exodus so looking at this darkness so we can get a, a understanding of when darkness darkness uh is occurring amos 5 18 it says woe unto you that desire the day of yahuwah to what end is it for you the day of yahuwah is darkness and not light amos 5 20 shall not the day of yahuwah be darkness and not light, even very dark, and no brightness in it. So imagine the whole world now is full of darkness. It's it's a uh, a dark place, but but there are these people that are full of light. They're shining, and the reason they're shining is because they are wise. 
The reason they're shining is because they keep his commandments. The reason they're shining is because they have the spirit of the most high dwelling within them and they follow they follow uh, Yahuwah and his instructions. So in this time of darkness, we we should be shining out like just like a light that's on a hill. A city that's on a hill, a light, we should be shining because the darkness is everywhere. So that's just going to make the light just even that much more bright. First Thessalonians 5, 4 through 5 says, But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief, the day of Yah. Ye are the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. So we're not of the darkness, we're children of the light. So let's uh, read a few more verses uh, in Isaiah before we end. Uh, verse three, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of your rising. So during this time, the Gentiles are going to see us are going to see our light. And the kings, the rulers, those that are in control and in charge right now, they're going to come to the brightness of our rising. See, normally the sun rises. Actually, it always rises. But when we, as we are getting ready to leave this place, as we come closer and closer to this, getting ready to leave, these Gentiles, they're going to see us. And even the kings, this light is going to be attractive. Lift up thine eyes round about and see all they that gather themselves together. They come to see. Thy son shall come from afar and thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Side. So this is an instruction for when this uh, is occurring during the second exodus. He's saying, lift up your eyes. He's talking to Israel here. Lift up your eyes. Look all around you. Look at all these people that are gathering themselves together. They come to you is what that means. When it says they come to thee, it's saying they're coming to you. Your son shall come from afar and your daughter shall be nursed at your side. So even those that got a bunch of children, even those that there, there, there may, may be some mothers who are who are by themselves and, and they, they're like, well, how am I going to get to where I need to be? Well, even the daughters, the young daughters, they're going to be nursed at their side. They're going to have help. They're going to have help. Verse five, then thou shalt see and flow together and your heart shall fear and be enlarged because of the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto you. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto you. So. Even. Our hearts, this it says thine heart, this is uh, this is Israel, as we're, as we're going to see later down below. This is talking about Israel. It's not talking about the Gentiles. It says, when you see, when you see and flow together, your heart shall fear and it's going to be enlarged because of all of the abundance of the sea. So remember, the sea represents nations, peoples, languages, multitudes. So because of all of the wealth of the nations being converted unto you, that's what's going to cause you to fear. And the forces, the forces is like the might, the strength, the military might of the Gentiles. They're going to come unto you. They're going to be coming and helping you out. The multitude of camels shall cover thee, the dromedaries of Midian and Ephah. All they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense. They shall show forth the praises of Yahuwah. So all of these nations, some some of these in Africa, some in the uh, Middle East, 
they are going to be coming. They're going to be bringing their gold. They're going to be bringing incense. They're going to be showing forth the praises of Yahuwah. All the flocks of Kadar shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Naboth, Naboth shall, shall minister unto you. They shall come up with acceptance on my altar, and I will I'll glorify the house of my kabod. So, so all of these, um, we, we see that the nations are going to start bringing things to Israel. The tables are going to be turned. So, you know, the last are going to be first and the first are going to be last. So that's going to happen one day. So I don't, even though I'm not where I want to be right now, I'm so happy for that verse. I'm so happy for that verse. I know it's not going to always be this way where Israel was at the bottom. One day things are going to change and nations are going to actually be bringing their wealth. They're going to be bringing their gold. They're going to be bringing their animals. They're going to make sure that we are taken care of because of all the years that Israel has built up the nations that they've been living in, those that have held them captive, whether it be America, whether it be Babylon, or whether it be Assyria, we all these different nations, we've helped bring them th these empires to the point that they become very wealthy, they become very strong. Well, now the nations are gonna start doing the reverse. They're gonna start bringing us all that wealth. Verse 8, who are these that fly as a cloud and as the doves to their windows? Surely the isle shall wait for me in the ships of Tarshish first to bring thy sons from afar, their silver and their gold with them, and unto the name of Yahuwah, thy Elohim, and to the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified thee. So these, this, is, this appears to me to be uh, reparations coming to us. We're leaving our land. Who are these that fly as a cloud? See, Isaiah is trying to explain what he's seeing. Looks like he's seeing some, some that are flying away. Others, he's saying, surely the owls are going to wait for me in the ships of Tarshish to bring thy sons from afar. Their silver and gold with them unto the name of Yahuwah thy Elohim and the Holy One of Israel, because he have glorified thee. So this is, this is just like what Abraham said, and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance. Great substance. So, it says, and the sons of the strangers, that's the foreigners, the, the children of the foreigners shall build up your walls and their kings shall minister or serve you. For in my wrath, I smote thee, but in my favor, have I had mercy on you. See, it's, it's, a, it's a reversal. It's a reversal. Now the light is on us. Now the kabod. The esteem and the honor of Yahuwah is on us. And so now the strangers, the foreigners, they're going to be the ones building up our walls. Instead of we building up theirs, now it's the tables have been turned. It says the king, so that's the rulers. They're going to be the ones serving you. You know how it's it's been uh, for so long. It's, it's always been like this, where you have the common man that's doing you know, most of the work, doing all the, doing all the grunt work, you know. Well, now the kings, the rulers, they are going to be serving you. Verse 11, it says, therefore thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night that men may bring unto you the forces of the Gentiles and that their kings may be brought. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve you shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. So I um I'm gonna take a pause here. Any any questions or comments up to this point? Um I want I just 
two things I want my I want to show today. I want to show that there is a destroying wind that's coming, and that that involves war. Is going to be um, Babylon is going to be surrounded as we as we read. But this does not have to be the fate of everyone, because we also know that there's a group, there's a remnant that Yah is saying, arise and shine for thy light is come. But for those that have this light, those are going to be the ones that are wise. Those are going to be the ones that keep the commandments. But I'll uh, stop right there. Go ahead, Yermiyahu. So uh, while you were reading Isaiah 60, verse 5, um, two words jumped out at me. And so I just looked it up because I had a thought that came in my mind where it says, because of the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. And the, the thought that came to my mind was, uh, currency, currency is going to be changed. We're going, we're moving towards a one world currency, and it was like I'm seeing that. Yeah, but it don't matter. It's going to be converted unto us, no matter what it is. And so I looked at the word abundance, and um, that word in. Um, oh, before I say abundance, I looked up the word converted. And that word converted, I just looked it up for Webster's, but I looked at abundance in the script. Mm -hmm. But that word converted means to be turned or changed from one substance or state to another. And so I looked at the word abundance, and it, the first main meaning means the sound or noise, like a shower or a multitude of men itself. But the third meaning is plenty or wealth or riches. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, you know, they're trying to change it to be one way. But Yah's like, it don't matter what you do. I'm gonna change, I'm gonna change everything that you're trying to do. And you're gonna be serving my remnant. So I was just looking at that. I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. Um how Yah is, he's really doing everything for us and setting everything up, but we have our part to play too. So mm -hmm. that's all. Yeah, that's good. Any other uh, comments or uh, questions? Okay, so there's, uh, before I go, I just want to read one more scripture here. I want to read verse 14. Um, it says, the sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto you. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet, and they shall call thee the city of Yahuwah, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. So I want to read this verse because I just wanted you to see that in verse one and all, all the rest of these verses after this, when it says arise shine for your light is come, this is talking to, this is talking to Israel. It's talking to Zion. So uh, if that is, if that's it, I think I'm gonna stop for today and we can uh, end in prayer. So Abiyah, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, for uh, teaching us and showing us in your word. We know that destruction is coming, but we also thank you that you have mercy on those that repent, those that follow you, those that trust in you. We thank you that you've given us uh, understanding. Thank you, Father, for not leaving us in darkness. Thank you for giving us uh the, the the understanding that we need to come to you, we need to follow you, we need to put our trust in you. I ask Father that you uh, continue to teach us, guide us by your by your ruach hakadesh. Please guide us and lead us uh, in the path of righteousness. Also, uh, teach us and show us how to be to to be examples and be this light, because we want others to be able to follow us. We want others to be able to see you 
as we're shining, as we're uh, walking in this cabal that uh, you're going to put on us. So we praise you. We give you glory. We give you honor. In the name of Yahusha, we pray. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hello, yeah. Hello, yeah. Hello, yeah. Oh, Leila Tov. Leila Tov. Leila Tov. Great lesson, Aki. Yeah. Yeah. Leila Tov, everyone. Yep. Have a have a uh, wonderful night, and I will see y'all. See y'all later. All right. Wait until we show.